When the Kari Aria Talondrome first made its appearance, the world was in shock with the vertical arms. Who'd ever heard of such a thing? Well, of course, you know, since it was a good quad, Real ACC made their own version. And of course, this is the real one. <laughs> so the real one 220 comes in multiple colors. And this one is gonna be orange. So I got some uh, the metal pieces, screws, main carbon fiber pieces, a battery strap, and of course some instructions. Let's take a look at these real quick. Usually, like I've said before, if it has a lot of instructions, it's because it's a complex build or because they're just good at uh, giving you instructions. In this case, it looks like it's a little bit of both. We'll get this thing put together and take a look at it. So to get the build started, the first thing you're supposed to do is take these little metal pieces and put them on top of the arms like this. Now one side of this is smooth and the other side is threaded. That side is threaded. So I'll take this 10 millimeter screw, push it through here, and it goes through the, through the metal, through the carbon fiber into the other side and screws in. And the nice thing is, being that this is vertical, this is all the area that's gonna, it's gonna cause wind resistance. Instead of having a 12 to 20 millimeter wide arm, you have this. So here's the frame mostly assembled. It says real ACC on one side and it says real one on the other side. Now when you're putting this together, the most difficult part, well most tedious part really, is trying to get this little plate in here because it has little grooves cut inside the metal and inside the arms where the thing slides inside there on all four of them and you're trying to put these screws together uh, into the two pieces. And it's a little bit tedious but it, it's, it's not impossible. It comes with a set of nylon spacers. In fact it comes with three sets, there's two more up there. So it has three sets of nylon spacers and has a lot of extra M8 or eight, mil, eight millimeter screws and those are to run through the um, carbon fiber pieces here like this. These things go out here on the side to provide a little bit more strength since they are running vertical. The arms are running vertical. There's not a lot of strength forward and backward in this. So this here, this little piece here allows a lot of the strength from the arm in the front to help the arm in the back and vice versa. So the eight millimeter screws are to run through this piece of carbon fiber and this plate. Now this little piece of carbon fiber is about two and a half and that little metal piece is about three. So you're about uh, five and a half. So if you have eight millimeter that leaves about two and a half millimeters that go up into your motor. So that should be fine for almost all the motors. It does have, uh, it does come with a few extra six millimeter screws. They're just a little shorter. And, uh, but the main thing is when you, when you attach your motors on to this, you just want to make sure that those screws aren't going up through the metal piece here up and touching the windings. If you see it going above the inside metal piece a little bit inside your motor, it's probably okay. You just want to make extra sure that it's not actually touching the windings because then that would be bad and your motors would get real hot. So these arms here, they are about four millimeters wide and in this case they're about 14 millimeters tall. And they have this hole out here in the middle, and I would assume this is for running a, a, a strap through or something to hold the ESC onto the arm vertically if you wanted to. Now a lot of people I would assume are going to use 4-in-1 ESCs so it all sits inside the frame. And that's probably also why they gave you the three sets of spacers, one for the bottom, and then you can have your 4-in-1 uh, sit there, and then have another set of spacers with your flight board, another set of spacers with your VTX up there, or your receiver or whatever. So anyway, that, yeah, these arms aren't too bad. And this top plate, I think it's only like two millimeters thick. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get this thing on the scale and we'll get it weighed. So for just the frame without the supporting arms, it comes in about 92 grams. If I throw on the two arms, it bumps up near 100.8. And if I put the battery strap on here, the one that came with it, oops, let's see if I can get it up on there. It bumps it up to about 100. And 3.8. Now it does have a set of nylon spacers on there and the nylon nuts. Those add on about one gram. So this is probably closer to about 103 um, weight on the frame with the battery strap. From one arm to the end of the other arm, it comes in to be right at 220. And so that is that's good because that's what it's actually advertised as. And it it comes here about 158 side to side and front to back. They're about 158. So this is actually a true X, not a stretch of looking for a stretch then this is not the one you're looking for. So a few things to be aware of if you're going to be building this frame or looking to build it. One thing that's kind of nice is it has the hole spacing in here for your normal 30 by 30 or 30.5 by 30.5 millimeter flight board. Most of your SP racing boards, your F4s are all going to be that size. Down here it has a second set of holes and these are for your 20 by 20 uh, hole spacing uh, flight boards. Let's get this on here real quick. 
but this is a lot we're gonna start seeing a lot more 20 by 20 stuff coming through yeah so there I don't got a perfect but it's about 20 by 20 so it should fit there now, like I was saying you're gonna start seeing a lot more of these 20 by 20 um, fly boards come along and the reason for that is because the 20 by 20s are gonna be smaller and hence lighter and they're gonna make the quad a little faster going through the air because it's not dragging as much weight around so far you can't it's harder to find the uh, smaller um, 30 amp ESC's that fit in this in the 20 by 20 size 30 amp ESC's and higher all, are all over for your 30 by 30 but the 20 by 20s they'll come there's a lot of fly boards that are right now 20 by 20 now another thing about this frame if you look at this there's a little lip right here from these metal pieces because this little carbon fiber piece is recessed in here and I think that's why they included this little piece of velcro you're supposed to stick it in here and then stick the other piece on your battery and that's supposed to help provide a little bit of gap filling I guess inside there so your battery is not landing directly on these two metal pieces and denting your battery so this looks like it would be okay, but when I push, it still sinks down below the metal. So, I don't know, it might need to get a little better padding in there for this. So, we'll see. Here I have a Runcam Swift 2 installed, and this screw hole right here, it goes right into the middle of the camera. And this is all the more angle you get because of the spacer that's up here, kind of right in the way. But if you wanted a little bit more angle than that, you'd have to move that out of the way. If, according to their little scale here, that looks like it's about, oh, 40, maybe maybe 45 degrees or so, something like that. So you, you still get a good, decent angle, but that's all the more you can get. And so another thing on this, it has these, these back holes back here, and you, right here. And I put this camera on upside down to see if it would line up with those holes, and it does not. So you can't, you, you can't use the middle hole here and then try to get it into these little spacers back here in the back. The holes just don't quite line up right so I'm not really sure what these extra holes are back here here I put the screw for the run cam down here in this little part here so it can slide up and down the nice thing about doing it this way is you can actually get more angle out of it because there it's down all the way and you're getting some massive angle and you can you can slide it up to get different angles that you want but also by doing this you could also take a zip tie and wrap it around the spacer down around the camera and help hold it in place of course you probably need some kind of piece of foam in between there so that any vibrations from the from the frame are less likely to directly impact on the camera but even in this case the camera back here is completely covered you know so that in the event of a crash hopefully the frame would take all the abuse and you would save your camera and you wouldn't have a cracked lens like I do there but so I guess you could do this I still don't know what the purpose of these other holes are and maybe it's for a different style of camera but like I said this is the run cam swift 2 and it it does okay and in, in both in the middle and up here but I just can't get it to use this back hole for some reason so here's one of the front arms and here's a five inch prop and I'll center it kind of over this hole. You can see here it's not going to have any problem spinning past the frame on the front. And here's the back and if I center this over the motor hole you can see here again it's going to have like no problem spinning past the frame at all. Now the, nice, the nicest thing about this whole design is that you don't have a lot of material here in the way of the wind coming off the props. And even the material that is here is going to be pretty aerodynamic and letting this stuff slide past it a lot faster than it would if the arm was flat. Now I've seen, I've seen quite a few people showing up at races with the Kari Aria frame and I know a couple pilots that have gotten sponsored by them. Now does, that, does the frame like this with the aerodynamic arms have a big advantage over an exact same weight frame that does not have these? I think the answer is yes. Uh, the pilots I've seen fly these are fast. <laughs> Maybe it's just their flying style is fast. that have anything to do with the frame. Who knows? But I do think this would have an advantage over, another, over, over other 100 gram frames in that it's a lot more aerodynamic and the wind can pass by the arms a lot faster and with less resistance. So this is the real one made by Real ACC which is obviously some kind of clone or copy strongly inspired frame from the Cariaria frame. Now if you're familiar with the Cariaria a lot of this part of the arm and a lot of this setup here will look familiar. Now a big difference is going to be this little roll cage top up here at the top. The Cariaria one is a lot different looking than this one. So I'm kind of glad to see they didn't actually like directly clone the thing, but more made just another competitor that is <laughs> strongly inspired by it. Anyway, the real ACC, real one from Banggood. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave in the comments. I will try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.